Owners of the analog pocket are still waiting to play their FPGA handheld on a CRT. The tech company Analog has stated that their official DAC will be supported from the second quarter of 2023. My dear listeners, don't hold your breath. Constraints create innovations, and today there is another way to play the pocket on your grandma's JVC. Finally. Finally! 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 It's been 84 years. Yes, finally, the Analog Pocket has a DAC. But it's not the official product we were expecting. Developer Random Kill concocted a clever workaround that taps the digital signal from the cartridge port, routes it through an off-the-shelf digital-to-analog converter, and outputs the core's native resolution in component or RGB. This is the Anal Log Geyser. Analog Geyser. In my hand is revision 1, but when you go to order through the online store, you'll be able to purchase the updated revision that adds RGB sync on green, YPBPR component, and a slight rework in the 3D print, and an option to fit over the pocket screen protector. Whereas my revision 1 was only suited for the bare pocket. So as long as you order the correct option, you can overlook the janky cosmetic surgery that I had to perform on mine. So what exactly does this neat little add-on actually do? First and foremost, it delivers crispy 18-bit analog RGB and YPBPR through a D-Sub 15 VGA connector to play on a 15kHz CRT or if you don't have an official dock for HDMI output and upscaling, you could send analog video into an external scaler like the OSSC Pro and output upscaled digital video. Just recently, composite and S-video output were added to the PC Engine core through the same active encoder used for the Mr. FPGA. The Analogizer does not handle audio, and instead, it's extracted through the headphone jack. Next to the VGA port is a serial connection input via a standard USB for snack adapters, which allows original controllers to be used on compatible cores. The recessed two-position switch changes the routing of the snack pins to increase compatibility, although you'll need a paperclip to reach it and it's best left in the default position A. On the opposite side is a 5V input via USB-C to power snack adapters and for RGB blanking. The Analogizer's VGA pin 9 outputs just over 2V without any external power, which may be inadequate to switch some SCART TVs into RGB through SCART pin 16. Whereas supplying 5 volts through the USB-C input sends just over 5 volts where you'll have better success switching your TV into external RGB mode. Regardless of Analogizer revision, it's safest to run sync through an inline resistor to attenuate the sync voltage if using with consumer SCART equipment that can't handle TTR level C sync. If you're using a commercial matrix switcher or a professional grade CRT, you'll likely be fine with just passing sync directly through a VGA to BNC cable. The Analogizer is built around the ADV7123 DAC and the design complies with the RS343A standard with 75 ohm RGB termination. So when a 100 IRE pattern is displayed, the RGB output reaches a peak-to-peak 650mV. Cores need to be specially coded to work with the Analogizer, which are downloaded through the Pocket Updater application on the SD card, 
or manually download the course online to copy over the files, especially those ending in .json. Jason! Random Kill's been working with developers to so far have compatible cores for the Neo Geo, NES, SNES, PC Engine, and the arcade game Alpha Mission. So expect this list to grow. Now here's something I did not expect to find. The Analogizer's output is actually faster than the Pocket itself. Let that sink in. Running the SNES 240p test suite lag test in slow motion, the Pocket screen is about one frame behind the Analogizer's output. Yes, it's only a frame, but impressive and insightful nonetheless. Everything so far sounds pretty awesome. You get analog output and original controller support through Snack. But I want to make something perfectly clear. The analogizer is not a mirror display of the pocket screen. <laughs> The Analogizer was built within the constraints of OpenFPGA, and one of several is no access to the menu on the extracted video through the cartridge port. So what you get from the analog output is literally just the game. Okay, well, if the image still displays on the pocket, I can just use the snack controller to navigate the menu on the three and a half inch screen, right? No, you cannot. Just like a mister, the Pocket's menu can't be controlled through Snack, and instead, you'll need to use the Pocket itself. But Marco, I have the dock that lets me sync Bluetooth and USB controllers to navigate the menu. Well, <laughs> yeah, but the Pocket screen goes to sleep when it's docked. Shh. Okay, so then I'll just simultaneously output HDMI to another display solely to control the menu so I don't need to leave the couch? Yeah, you do that. But be aware that docking the pocket prevents plugging in an auxiliary cable. Well, check out these hacks. Either extract audio from the HDMI port or use a fully wired female to male USB-C cable so the console is connected without being cradled, freeing up the headphone port. Yeah, this setup is hella jank. And no way am I gonna display on the projector purely so I can use the menu when docked so I can play some Mario on a CRT. But there is a workaround. Grab yourself a long ass VGA extension cable and have the pocket in close proximity. That way, you can play with Snack or the Pocket and quickly switch games or make menu adjustments without leaving the couch. We all know that long analog cables are more prone to noise and signal degradation, and if you have a cozy little desk set up, you'll probably get the most mileage out of the analogizer. You can put the screen to sleep, but all it's really doing is displaying a black image while the backlight stays on, so it won't save you on battery. On the topic, I didn't notice any appreciable reduction in battery life, but I also didn't fully run the pocket through comparative tests either. Snack adapters don't need to be plugged into a voltage shifter like some might be doing on the mister and instead, you can plug straight into the port. I actually found the adapters to work without a 5V USB-C input, so it must be needed only for certain controllers, but don't take my word for it. For strain relief, I use a right angled adapter, and just remember, this port is not wired for USB, just pass through of the controller's serial connection. These are the adapters that are so far working, just be sure to select the correct controller order in the menu. I don't have any two-player snacks on hand, but a multiplayer setup is entirely possible. And although the NES Zapper is a selectable option in the core, it doesn't actually work. 
The palette options for the NES also output to the analog display, and the RGB video is just as vibrant and crisp as the Mr. FPGA or an RGB modified NES and AV Famicom. Outputting the analog RGB through the OSSC Pro to have it displayed in 3x 720p on my projector is equally as crisp. Then using the scaler's post-processing options, add scan lines and mask overlays to your liking for that CRT look. My shtick is downscaling, so I'm not as well versed in things like optimal timings, but I don't see any sync jitter and it all looks good to me. I previously made an eboot of the 240p test suite for the PSP, so I could use the console as a sort of portable test pattern generator that outputs composite and component which is super convenient when testing a CRT on the go, but for those that also need RGB, life's a little easier thanks to the analogizer. If you're testing an RGB capable TV with a factory SCART socket, then you'll probably want to carry a power bank with a USB-C cable to send enough voltage to SCART pin 16 for RGB switching. The lack of a one-to-one -one screen display and inability for Snack to control the menu will dictate how it's best utilized depending on your setup. And in my opinion, it's best paired with a VGA extension cable or played at a desk. You could save yourself I forego in the dock altogether and upscale externally. Or better yet, a newly announced feature to the PC Engine core was a VGA scan doubled output, which is a huge bonus. Seriously, trying to complete this video has been a constant game of cat and mouse, where new cores and features are constantly added with no end in sight. I'll be honest, the analogizer's not really fit for my setup, but I'm more than happy using it as a portable test pattern generator via the 240p test suite. Overall, the analogizer delivers exactly what it promises. Analog video output and native controller support. I wonder if we'll ever get to display and control the menu via this neat little add-on. Maybe, maybe not. Although it's bound by external limitations, Random Kill's done exceptionally well to deliver a means to make the analog pocket the next best thing to a Nintendo Switch dock and go experience. And this is probably as close as it gets until analog releases a firmware update that adds support for the official DAC. Thanks all for watching and happy gaming.